all right, this is gonna be something different for me. I'm gonna try to get this out the door quickly. How to install your new Xeon 4189 CPU. It may not even be a Xeon. Maybe they've got workstation CPUs by now. Maybe they've got a you know an i9 in this 4189 socket. Although I wouldn't count on it. Eight memory channels. That's why we've got to go to a new server socket. We're going from six memory channels to eight. And also PCI Express 4. Right, the first thing you need to know about this socket is if you take the CPU out of its packaging, you're doing it wrong. You're already doing it wrong even before you literally do anything. So this is a CPU tray for those 4189 CPUs. And this is plastic, cheap, cheap plastic. If you look very closely at the bottom of the CPU, you'll see a whole bunch of capacitors. If you put the CPU down flat on the desk, as has been the case for many generations of Intel CPUs now, those capacitors are directly in contact with the desk. So if you like, drag it across the desk or touch it wrong or it happens to hit a little uneven surface on your desk you could break off one of those nearly microscopic capacitors resistors whatever happens to be soldered there this plastic gives a little bit in the middle it cradles those capacitors lovingly so that's sort of step one is don't remove it from the packaging step two is you have this little plastic thing this little plastic thing is designed to be pressed onto the cpu while it's still in the tray so Yes, look at the little triangle. There's a triangle notch. There's a triangle on the tray. If you look really closely, there's a triangle marked on your CPU. Is your CPU oriented the correct way in the tray? If your CPU is not oriented the correct way in the tray, somebody has really screwed up somewhere and you need to fix that. But otherwise, don't, take, don't touch it, don't take it out of the tray. You push the plastic thing down on the CPU and it snaps into place. And the plastic thing will actually sit a little below the surface of the CPU. The CPU is going to stick a little above it, so you can make sure that it's snapped in properly. And it's still not time to remove the CPU from the tray. The next thing you can do is take your CPU cooler. I've got these lovely Noctua coolers. There's a whole separate video on that. You should check that out. Noctua has four coolers, a dual tower that's designed for 4U, a single fat tower that's also designed for 4U. This gives you a little flexibility depending on your motherboard layout. In my tower configuration here, I can't fit dual 140s. I've got a 120 and a 140. So you can get a 120 and a 140 tower cooler. Those, of course, won't work in a 4U rack mount case, but these will, or at least they're designed to. And all of these can handle up to the 270 watt TDP of the top end monster, the 8380, which is what's in here. This is probably the most expensive Intel system you can buy right now. That's two CPUs, which is kind of nuts. 80 cores, yeah. So this one doesn't come with pre-installed mounting hardware. You're gonna have to mount it to the cooler. It should look like this. It's got, it's got legs and wires and elaborate nuts and stuff. Yes, it is, a, it is a fairly elaborate process here. These clips, these wire clips will hold the uh, CPU cooler into the socket on the motherboard. So you should make sure that these clips are as out of the way as possible before you, you know, mash it down into the motherboard. And then of course, these come with pre-installed thermal paste, Noctua. You wanna make sure that you've got a properly installed thermal paste, but this will actually clip to the plastic thing. So while it's still in the tray, you can take this and mash it down into the CPU and it will all click together. At this point, you are ready to install your CPU onto the motherboard. Now, before you click the heatsink down onto the CPU, look at the orientation on the motherboard for the little triangle and look at the orientation of your CPU cooler. You don't wanna orient your CPU cooler so that you know it's uh, exhausting hot air down or anything like that. These are configured so that the hot air is being drawn upwards to the top of the case so that it'll exhaust properly. You gotta look at the orientation of the socket to know which way makes sense. Now, I'll also mention really quick here that the CPU sockets on the motherboard come with a plastic cover. Do not remove that cover until your very last step is to install this. If you drop a screw into the CPU socket, it will ruin the CPU socket. Those little pins are very delicate. It's very easy to accidentally destroy them in the CPU socket on the motherboard. You gotta try to gently pilot your heatsink bit of plastic CPU combo onto the motherboard, and then you can flip the little levers to actually lock the CPU in place. Now there are four nuts that are actually mounted, four plastic nuts that have to be screwed down with a T25, I think, Torx bit. Now it's really important to note, you can over torque it, and that would be bad because the nuts will explode or you'll damage the CPU socket. 
the posts that are actually pre-installed on the motherboard that the cover was, was clipped to, if you look really closely, those are on kind of a wire spring. So it'll give a little bit, but you don't want to over tighten it. You actually should have an Intel torque wrench. If you go to a professional system installer or something like that, and they don't have the appropriate torque wrench, uh, they're probably not a list. So you want to get the special Xeon tool. You can pick it up on Newegg and, and some other places. It's just like, uh, just like Team Red, although Team Red included a torque wrench in their in their packaging. Probably Intel will include a torque wrench in their packaging. Uh, that would be my guess. I don't know that, but you know I happen to have a, a, an appropriate torque wrench, and you basically tighten each corner down, corner to corner, very gently. You know, try to look at it really close and make sure everything is lined up properly, like the uh, the uh, CPU is not miss sitting on the socket or anything like that, because if you tighten it down and it's not sitting in there perfectly, you could potentially damage the CPU or the socket. And these things are like 10 grand plus a pop. So definitely don't accidentally damage it. That would be bad. Then once you get it evenly tightened down corner to corner, so like, you know, turn it two or three turns in one corner and then the other corner and then come back up here and then the other corner and just do it two or three turns at a time going crisscross so that the CPU cooler goes down into the socket uh, with even pressure. That's what our goal here is. And like I say, you don't want to over tighten it. It will be fairly tight. If you really get a tightening by feel, you can feel the plastic nuts bottom out. So definitely stop a little before they bottom out. So if they bottom out, just back it off like a quarter turn or let the torque wrench do the work for you. And that's pretty much it. I was able to get both of my $10,000 8380 CPUs installed in our Super Micro motherboard here. I've got a lot of other benchmarks and other content coming up, so be sure you uh, like and comment and get subscribed and all that fun stuff. I'm Wendell, this is Level 1. I'm signing out. You can find me in the Level 1 forums. Post pictures of how your DIY job went. It's, uh, it's probably interesting. I'm signing out, and I'll see you there.